Hello, Booktube. Hello, Booktube. <laughs> <laughs> I have Deb here. Those of you who are new to the channel, this is a, an old friend of mine, Deb, uh, who wanted to get out of making videos with me. And I reminded her of something that Cotton Mather said to us a long time ago, till death do you part. <laughs> He's long gone. <laughs> but I have an idea of what I wanted to do. Since Deb's never in videos anymore, I want to do the uh, the 52 Nifty Qs, the bookish Qs tag that Strip Cover Lit did. Uh, because these are such good questions. And I, because, uh, to be honest, I'm a little selfish. I don't know your answers to a lot of these. So I want to see. Uh, so, But there are 52 of them. And you do gas on. So let's just crack right into the All right, let's do it. Uh, uh, number one, what book are you reading right now? Right now, I'm reading a book I'm not enjoying called Daisy Jones and the Six. No kidding. Daisy Jones and the Sex, isn't it? No, it's the Six. The Six. Uh, you're not liking it. It's I'll, got a lot of hype around it. I'll tell you what I don't like about it. I don't like books that read like movies. And I, and I don't like where, where you feel like the, the author is writing for the screen. The screen. Oh, I don't do that. And, <laughs> and that's not the case with this, but what I don't like about it is it, it they're little short interview pieces with the band members, et cetera, et cetera. And it reads like reality TV. And I don't like it. I don't like that aspect of it. Okay, what about the rest of it? Is any of it enjoyable? Um, I'm a little intrigued, so... I haven't got to it yet. It has lots of buzz around so, it. So... I'll, I'll see where it goes. And it has I'm, I'm going to finish for a movie. <laughs> of course, it has. <laughs> I'm going to finish it, but I, I, I'm I'm really iffy on it. Uh, question number two: What was the last thing you highlighted? I have that in my phone. I just finished reading Gingerbread by. <laughs> <laughs> Show them your lock screen. <laughs> my what? Your lock screen. <laughs> oh. Um, okay. In case you have any doubt, <laughs> Deb and I are pretty much the same. It's my dog Reese. <laughs> um. So, uh, reading Gingerbread, I just finished reading Gingerbread by Helen... Oh, yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, I had no idea how to pronounce her last name. And it was a line from that. It was, uh, Harriet read more voraciously than Simon and Margot ever had. They discouraged this. She'd be bored once she ran out of texts that were new to her. She surprised them with the discovery that once an avid reader runs out of books, she reads people. I like that. You not so much. I hate uh, Helen Oyeyemi. Okay. She's not nearly as talented as she would be if her name were Helen O'Connor. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I enjoyed the book, though. Uh, question number three. What do you plan to read next? Um, I don't know. I have a bazillion things. Um, I have... Oh, actually, one of our co-workers wrote a book. What? James Charlesworth wrote a book. Deb and I used to work in a bookstore. And, and I, ca I can't remember. It, it's his I first didn't novel. I know that he wrote a book. He did. It's his first novel. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my Is head. Is it with a major publisher? Uh, yes. Um, and I'm expecting great things from it because James was very literary, very intelligent. I, I expect it to be great. James like, like if, like if you wrote a book, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's with a major publisher. Is it out yet? Yes, yes. It's out already. Yep, yep, it is. I got it at the library, which I probably shouldn't say because that deprives poor James of a of a uh, of money. But do I remember James Charlesworth? Uh. We had a wonderful time at our bookstore. We had a ball. You'd probably remember um, him. Do I remember him? Probably. I'm going to find out what the title is and who the publisher is if you want to move on to the okay. next question. Okay, all right. Uh, question number four. One fiction writer, living or dead, with whom you'd like to grab a drink? Dickens. I would like to hang out with Charles Dickens. I don't have a reason for wanting to hang out with Charles Dickens, except I, I think it might be fun. Okay, question number five. One nonfiction writer, living or dead, with whom you'd like to grab a drink? Um, 
um, I don't think I have an answer to that. What about Jane Goodall? Wouldn't that be fun? Hear the story she has to tell? That probably would be. Or maybe Carl Sagan. Okay, all the James Car Charlesworths that are coming up are not the correct James Charlesworth. <laughs> See, this is why I paused when you said, um, I'll find his book if you want to just go on to the next question. Because that plan of action relies on the fact that you can multitask, and of course you cannot. <laughs> so, so, so I knew this was going to happen. I was going to say, all right, question number three, blah, 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 blah. And you'd say, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> enough. All right, it's not James H. Charlesworth, folks. Um, he apparent, appears to be the well-known James Charlesworth. Um, this one... All right, I, there goes the tag. Yes, I'm sorry. See if you'd let me look at the questions before. Hands. You'd still be mired. You still that's can't. That's still. You, you, it's still a, an, an unbeatable bad combination of an inability to multitask and a granny inability to find anything All online. Right, you, you know what? You know what? Uh, we'll, 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 we'll put, put it, it in, in the, the comments. comments. There yes, you go. yes. We'll right. put it in the notes. Okay, all right. Uh, I don't remember what question we're on because it was five years ago. Uh, uh, we just did the what nonfiction uh, author would you want to I was using have... hyperbole. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, one... This is why I drink both. <laughs> <laughs> one booktuber with whom you'd like to have a drink. I actually <laughs> would love to have a drink with the guys from Strip Cover Lit. I think you're supposed to say that in answer to this No, question. no, I know it's their tag and everything, but but I truly would because I think Have you watched them recently? I haven't I haven't watched them recently because I haven't watched any book tube recently. Dalton has gone full hipster. Uh, I've seen the hair. It, full hipster. I've he seen... has little bows in his beard. Full hipster. Okay, I'm totally going to have to check that out. <laughs> that doesn't change anything. That was supposed to dissuade you. It made you want to do it even more. What's wrong with you? Uh, all right, now we'll do a, uh, some rapid okay. fire. Uh, right. uh, question number eight, Emily Dickinson or Edgar Allan Poe? Poe. Uh, nine, Hemingway or Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald. Ten, Jane Austen or Charles Dickens? God, I hate that one. Um, Dickens, but just barely. Uh, question number 11. Uh, Sam Harris or Christopher Hitchens? Neither. Okay. Uh, question number 12. Stephen King or Michael Crichton? King. Uh, question number 13. Brett Easton Ellis or Chuck Palahniuk? Neither. Okay. Uh, question number 14 is was the only one to which I said neither. John Green or Kurt Vonnegut? Vonnegut. Uh, question number 15. The Shakespeare's plays or his poems? Plays. Okay. Uh, question number 16. Adrian Fort or Dalton Gentry? From Strip Cover. Oh, Lake. my God. Which one is it? You oh have to choose. God. Oh, my God. I don't know. I go back and forth. Back and forth. That's fair enough. Although, I have to say, both the questions above that I said neither to, I know they love them as authors. All four yeah. Authors. Yeah, they need to get out. And, and, and <laughs> until and, uh, let's see here. Question number seventeen: Cormac McCarthy or J.K. Rowling? Oh God, that's tough. Uh, There's a little side note that if you don't pick J.K. Rowling, there's a chance she will retroactively <laughs> let you into a kinky <laughs> sex scene. <laughs> so you got that. You got that working on you right there. <laughs> okay. um, I'm going to go with Rowling, but only because McCarthy, I, I think, I, I, I would find other things to read that are similar. But Where, well written. Similar, but well written. I mean, as a writer, obviously, like, when you talk about a standard of writing, I would say McCarthy. But... But I enjoy the fun that is Harry Potter. So. All right, eighteen. Hannibal Lecter or Voldemort? Voldemort, because I hate Hannibal Lecter. You're supposed to hate Voldemort too. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> little little yes. window into Deb's <laughs> married history there is that, that, is that she doesn't hate Lord Voldemort. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Let's just move on. This is 
teetering on the brink of disaster here. Oh, the baby wants you to play oh, with her. Oh, she's so sweetie. Oh. Oh, she, has she, she has chipmunks. She has chipmunks. She has chipmunks. She pulls them out of her little tree stump and then demands that you do something with them. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, question number 19. T.C. Boyle or George Saunders? Ever read either one of them? I have. Um, they have both very much. Saunders. Just kind of lit authors. Saunders, I think, but I really like T.C. Boyle, too. Okay. Question number 20. Good writing or good story? Good writing. Okay. Uh, question number 21. Uh, YA or children's lit? Children's lit. Okay. I'm wondering now, I'm wondering now if, if some of the wags out there in my audience are going to systematically compare our answers. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to watch your answers huh. after this. You might want to watch all my videos. Yeah, I might. Lousy manatee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question number 22. Irony or humor? Irony. Uh, question number 23, sci-fi or horror? Sci-fi. Uh, number 24, fantasy or non-fiction? A little bit odd question there. Yeah. Long, tiny sliver uh, yeah, of fiction are... versus all of non-fiction. But, um, but still, are you a fantasy reader? Are you a big fantasy reader? I, I, I like to read fantasy, but not, um, but maybe a wider range of fantasy than what you immediately think of as fantasy. So, does it win over nonfiction? Oh, there's they're also very very close. But I would say if I were trapped on an island and I only had one of the two things, I would go nonfiction. All right. Uh, question number twenty-five. Uh, rather find a new favorite contemporary writer or a new favorite from an old writer. A new contemporary writer. Okay. Uh, question number 26. Haunted, sonnet or haiku? Haiku. Uh, question number 27. Sestina or Villanelle? I don't even know what that question means. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to. Uh, let's see here. Question number 28. Spend the evening at a library or a bookstore? Library. Okay. Uh, number 29. Uh, do you prefer a magazine or a Wikipedia article? Magazine. Uh, question number 30. Uh, prefer a dictionary or an encyclopedia? Encyclopedia. All right. Uh, number 31. The writer you would most like to write your biography. Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. Uh, it would have to be somebody that could meander. <laughs> um, of course, the mean answer here was that you should pick Goncharov. Because he wrote a book called Oblomov, which is about someone who never gets out of bed. <laughs> so, okay. So he has right. prior experience of telling the damn story. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. We shouldn't give them the mistaken impression that I'm always mean to you. Right? What other impression <laughs> is there? Uh, question number, let's just hurry on. Uh, question number 32, I do or do not highlight in my books? I do not. Uh, question number 33, I do or do not write in my books? Generally, I don't. If, if something strikes me, I write it in a separate notebook. Uh, question number 34, what is your earliest memory of a library? When I was growing up, we didn't, my town had a teeny, teeny little, like, one-room library, like, just not even worth going to. So Small my, town Maine? Yeah. So my earliest, my earliest library memories are all school library memories until I think I was probably in high school where the town got a decent, yet still small library, but, like, more than five books to rub together. So FedEx just pulled up outside the window. Oh, <laughs> the bell I, might ring. Oh, uh, but we're going to ignore distracted. it. We're going to ignore it to get this done. Uh, question number 35. When's the last time you went to the library? Yesterday. Was it the Boston Public Library? Or? It was a branch of the Boston Public Library, okay. yes. Do you go to the library a lot? That's not one of these questions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, question number 36. Have you ever stolen or accidentally stolen books from a library? It wouldn't be stolen in your case, but have you ever wandered out with a book? Um, um, I, I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong about the first part. <laughs> uh, let's see I, I, I once bought a book 
from the library that um, I kind of reported as, as lost, but it wasn't really lost. But I but I paid for it, so. Uh, what you I, did it to acquire it? Yes. So so I kind of did. I I was not honest with the library. But you reimbursed but, them. But <laughs> but they got money out of me for the book. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, question number thirty-seven. A touchy one. Mm -hmm. Give a ballpark. Uh, worse figure. than that previous <laughs> question. How many books do you own? Um. Can you even ballpark the number? I, I can't even. Two thousand. A thousand. Two thousand. You have more than two thousand. I, I, I may. You I have more than two thousand. I have no sense. I have no sense of how many books I have, okay. but. Uh, okay, now, question number 38. How many books do you think would make a reasonable size for a personal library? 500? Okay, I went a little higher than that, but I, that 500 is probably adequate. You're probably right. Uh, question number 39. Uh, you've got Sense and Sensibility in Sea Monsters, Pride and Prejudice in Zombies. What do you feel about that phenomenon? It's over now. But what did you did you like it when we were getting it. those books in the store? I liked it. I so thought did I. I thought it was a. Um, I like whenever you can take something and have fun with it, and I liked it. Uh, question number forty: A horror trope you would like to see get more love? A little bit walkishly specific of a question. I didn't know what to what to say to that one. Something in horror that you wish happened more often. Or even if we don't, uh, since BookTube perennially misuses the word trope, uh, even let's just say what kind of horror would you like there to be more of? What's your favorite kind of horror? Werewolves? Undead? Mummies? Almost no mummy books. Vampire horror, maybe? Sexy um, vampire horror? No. Sparkly vampire horror? No. Romantic vampire? No. No. I want evil, undead, reeking of the grave... Is Death. there are there vampire. such vampires now? Can you think? When's the last time you read a book that had a vampire like that, a Dracula style vampire? I can't remember the last time I read one. Nineteenth century. After Anne Rice, yeah, all the people want to write about are sexy vampires. No, no, I, I want, I want evil, evil vampires, and and I would like to see more time travel in horror. I think that would be a great um, a great way to go. Okay. Uh, question number 41. Something that you think gets underutilized in science fiction. Hmm. I don't think I have an answer for that one. I don't. No? Like things just the way they are? <laughs> All right. Uh, More question... time travel. I enjoy time travel. <laughs> Uh, question oh. number uh, 42. Mm -hmm. Flash fiction. Form of literature or just a short, short story? I think it's a form of literature. On its own? Separate yeah. from being a short story? Well, obviously it's a short story, but I think it it's... I mean, there's poetry and then there's the haiku. I think it's... Okay. I think it's a short uh, story, but let's see its here. own specific thing. Question number 43. If you could own one book from all of history, what would it be? Frida. Frida, don't you? Oh my God, that's a good question. Yeah, they're great at tags. They, they've, they've start, in 2019, they've started tags on Tuesday. They're probably a new one today. And they're, they're all fantastic. Um, You'll have to come back. I don't. I don't know the answer. Won't she book two? She'll have to. Come I don't back. know the answer to. to all right. The uh, one all right. Book. We'll we'll move on here. We'll come back to it, like at the SATs. Uh, for, number forty-four. Audiobooks, same as reading. No. Do you like audiobooks? Have you tried them? I'm not very good at audiobooks because I. If I'm doing something else and listening to the audiobook, I find that I tune out the audiobook. And if I'm just listening to the audiobook, I find that I fall asleep. So, so I enjoy the idea of the audiobook. It, it just doesn't work for me. Okay. 
Uh, question number 45. Uh, who is the most literary songwriter of your time? Hmm. There are a lot. A lot of, a lot of the classic stuff from the 60s, like Bob Dylan, I think is very literary. It's very poetic. I'm thinking poetic. I'm thinking poetry. Who's the most literary? He isn't able to read. I don't care. He produces something that if you wrote it out on a page, people would still read it. Um, what was the question again? The most, the most literary, literary songwriter of your time. I said no cars. But I could easily have said Carol King as well. Talk, talk, or Joni Mitchell. Talk about a whole lifetime of radio Bruce writing Springsteen? great songs. Uh, okay, so uh, question number 46. What writer embarrasses you the most because you haven't read them? Do you have any amazing omissions? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um, Anything that actually embarrasses you? Or just stuff you haven't got to yet? Uh, things that embarrass me that I've never read? Um, yes, but of course, it's just coming out of nowhere. I right, can't right. Okay. think of, like. Well, the next one's the same thing. Like, uh, if I thought about it for 10 minutes, I'd... Or looked I'd, at your books. Or looked at my books, I'd definitely... Well, the next one is, uh, is uh, the flip side. What writer embarrasses you because you've read too much of them? Um, there are a whole bunch of junk writers that I could think of right off the top of my head that I've read everything they've ever written makes no they're terrible yes <laughs> I could have gone on forever I named a couple but I didn't even mention Edgar Rice Burroughs who doesn't I, have a, a, an accurate okay, so, literary bone in his body I've read every word he's ever written <laughs> so I, I wouldn't say that I've read too much but I've read a few and I and I would not hesitate to read another one and it is very embarrassing is Jackie Collins <laughs> There you go. There you go. I, I, she, she, her, she's so bad. It's like, it's like, um, what do they call it? movies that are just so bad that they're good? Like cult fiction, <laughs> yes. cult fiction that you just, you just read it and it's so stunningly, stunningly bad <laughs> that it amuses you and yet, and, and, and you want to read more. So, yeah. <laughs> but you notice that the, the, in her answer, she's saying something you should all agree with, which is that even though you're embarrassed, you wouldn't change your... Changing what yes. you do because of embarrassment, this kind of peer pressure thing is just... I, I, will give you, I will give you an example of how bad Jackie Collins is. Um, she wrote a line, she was better at hooking than cooking. <laughs> that's how bad she is. And that's what I love about it. We have a couple of booktubers that would accurately describe Adam at Memento Mori. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see here. Question number 48. What is a biography you're looking forward to reading? I would like to read presidential biographies. Yeah. And um, biographies of royalty. Um, like English royalty. Okay. Um, well, there's a huge biography of Edward the, uh, of Henry I, I, VI coming out, the I Shadow King. I saw that over there. That's, and then wasn't there... That fits that. What about the presidential what is, biography? The, the emperor. Yeah, that's is the Holy it, Roman Emperor Charles V. Yeah. I, I would Fascinating. Read, He's I never would had a big too. book like that uh, before. Uh and then I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what comes out. The problem is all the big serious biographies come out in the fall. So a lot of them aren't even in the list yet. I'm sure we'll get a presidential biography. I'm sure that we will. Like, but for what, instance, I know you might, you might want to read a big biography of Donald Trump. Yes? Oh, yeah, that would just fascinate <laughs> me. But what I would like to do is start with Washington and read a presidential uh, biography of each, each president in order to kind of get a sense of the history of the U.S. as well. You have to group some of them together, though. <laughs> I don't think... I, I was going to say, I don't think anyone's going to write a biography of, of Millard Fillmore. But then again, two years ago, somebody wrote a biography of Chester A. Arthur, and it was I not thought, only there, it was great. 
I bet there's even even like a very short little yeah. one. Yeah, well, there's that whole series. Find. There's yeah. a series of little. Uh, all right, uh, so let's see here. What what a bit of bd 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 bd. Uh, okay, number 49. Do you have any dream reading cubby? Yes. I'll tell you what it is. I Because I have so many books, and they're... Way more than a thousand. And, oh, yes, several thousand. Let's say several, several thousand. thousand. And they're everywhere, and they're stacked up, and they're... They pretty much cover all the furniture. They're, they're stacked on the floor. They're double piled. Yeah. They're in boxes. They're just, it, it's its overwhelming. So my dream space would be a completely empty room with one chair and one light. And that would be my, my dream. You wouldn't want your books room. in the room? No. Because they're too what overwhelming. If, what if, the room, too if you're making a room out of nothing, you could make a room with shelves. <laughs> no, no, because I don't even want to look at them. Because as I'm as I'm reading and I'm looking around and I'm like, oh God, I should read that one next. No, I should read that one next. No, I I'm so embarrassed. I've never read that one. So your dream but, reading cubby is a room with a chair where you sit there and stare at the walls. <laughs> yes. Your dream reading cubby is a, yeah. where, a room where no reading gets done. Okay, no, no, there'd be a chair. Uh, they'd be a desk because you know I'd probably want to take notes, and there'd be a light, and that would be it. What about it books? Too... No, <laughs> you no know books no. in your reading cubby. No, because okay, that whole, one's new. <laughs> the whole point of my reading cubby would be to get away where I could just focus on the one book. So that you I'm would reading. have a book. I'd have the book I'm reading. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> I thought you were describing. No. Uh, just, you were describing a rubber room with a chair in it, where you just go in and stare at the walls. Have you spent enough time in rooms like that in your life? No. Good Lord. No, I would have the they book. Practically that had I... a wing named after it, McLean, until it shut down, and it shut down because of her. So, I would have the one book that I was reading: okay. a notebook, a pen, I was a table. Okay. Well, the chair. reason why I was prodding for thirty straight minutes was to get you to mention the word book. In your answer I, about a reading cubby, I thought that was obvious. No, I didn't did say. I didn't say. You know. So you're saying I'm dumb. I was gonna say I didn't say I was wearing clothes, but I would be. But that's not necessarily some people. <laughs> <laughs> some people, that's not necessarily a thing that they do. Okay. I'm not sure they needed to know that. <laughs> they, but then again, they know already. <laughs> anyway, uh, they don't. Does every, they know everything about me. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's sad. They know everything about me, and yet there, there are 6,000 of them. <laughs> and they still like you, which is hard to imagine. I have, I have sworn off trying to understand that on this channel out loud. I might waste time on it in my journal, but I do not understand. You know what? The thing that it reminds me of is was the loyalty of my customers. At yeah. the old information desk, where I treated them like dirt. <laughs> I, they came in with a question, and I said, well, never mind your question. I've got this book that I just read. And 30 minutes later, I'd still be talking about it. And they still, when it was Christmas time, made their own line for me. <laughs> there was I'll a line understand. for the information desk, and then there was a line for me. Why? I don't understand it. It's pure molten sexual allure, isn't it? <laughs> Something you're, funny? You're on to it, yeah. What I thought. What, <laughs> uh, book, two, book, book two, what is it about Steve that you just can't they give can't, up? They can't answer. I've asked it. I've stopped asking, but I used to ask it. And I, I can't get an answer that makes any sense. Every answer applies to a bunch of other channels where the host is not incredibly old with small park stars from 1782 who chortles private jokes and Broadway show tunes about <laughs> books that haven't come out yet. None of it makes any sense. None of it does. <sighs> this is about you. Not me. Okay. So, so uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so question number 49. Do you have a dream reading cover? We're not going down that <laughs> horrible road again. God help us. Uh, question number 50. The last literary phenomenon that really got your gears grinding. What's the last thing that really bugged you in the book world? Well, if, if you counted the number of words and rants that I've produced about it, it, it would be Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> still, how many years has that been out? Been and, a long time. And I still rant about it every chance I get. Remember how depressing it was when it first started to take off? Oh, and you thought, I will be spared. And then every third customer. That's what they wanted. 
every third customer. You just it became inevitable that in the course of a working day, you were going to talk about. That Remember thing. when I was talking about Jackie Collins, and I was saying it's so bad, it's good. Yeah. Fifty Shades is just yeah. so bad, it it's stinks. That it's just bad, yes. It stinks. <laughs> yeah, Jackie Collins seems to be in on her own joke. There's to yeah, a certain yeah, extent, yeah, yes, does. yes. She doesn't think she's a great writer. Same thing with Julie Cooper in the UK. Right, yeah, the same I've kind never of books. Julie Cooper. Cooper but... Is is that a a lapse that must be? If if you can get through one of Jilly Cooper's thirty page polo narrations <laughs> and think she's talking about polo, then you should go back to the nunnery <laughs> with uh, with the, the lady from The Sound of Music. Oh, How do you solve a problem like Deb? If you can get even 10 pages, she writes polo scenes that go on for 30 pages. If you can get even 10 pages into one and still think you're reading about polo, <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> she, she's the same as Jackie Collins, where they seem to be in on their own joke. I don't think either one of them would no. think that they were doing anything important. Whereas no. Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah, I think she's she just gone in interviews and said... I think she thinks she's a writer, and <sighs> she's not. Uh Let's see here. 50, question number 51. What was the last piece of literature that changed the way you read? Wow. I had no answer to this myself. Wow, that's a good question. It changes the way I read. And I, and I know things have. Um, I don't think I have an answer for it either. Uh, all right. Well, we can, again keep in mind you can email me if you, if second thoughts come to you, and we'll put them in the comments too. And then question number fifty-two. We have reached the end at only thirty minutes. Uh, what booktuber have you been watching most recently? I you stopped watching booktube. I haven't right? been watching booktube, and and one of the reasons, and I'll and I'll say this is one of the reasons is because when I. I don't need more books to want to read. And it is a problem with books. And <laughs> watching people talk about books that I haven't read makes me want to read them and it's and it and it's just overwhelming. Um so I I kind of don't watch booktube. I love it for that. For that very thing. It's just a and the stream of books. So that even if it's a book yes, but that you can, somebody holds up that I, I've already read and made my mind up. you can get them up, read. I can get them read, yes. I, but I love that feeling. I mean, somebody holds up a book and I think, okay, I can see it in their thumbnail before I even click on the video. And right. I, think, I think to myself, okay, I know that book. I've read everything by that author. I know what I think about that book. And then I click on the video specifically to see if the, if the booktuber can change my mind. So I think I would like that. I love it. But it I, often I happens. Never, it often happens. I never have read anything that anyone's talking about. I uh, had a friend who's a book reviewer uh, who who said to me at the beginning, three years ago, before I started BookTube, said, well, that's never going to happen, right? Many other things might happen, but that's never going to happen. These people haven't read as much as you have. So you're never going to experience that. And I had to point out to him, you know, it isn't a matter of how much anybody's read. It's a matter of how passionately you read the book right in front of you. Mm -hmm. That's what will change your mind about it when you're another person listening to them. Not, you won't, when you hear that, you're not going to say, okay, you've made a beguiling case for this book that I have previously dismissed, but I don't care about that until I know everything else you've ever read in your life. You're not going to say that. And that, that has proved to be absolutely true for me on book two. I love those videos. Um, but one thing, one thing that I do find interesting about BookTube, and I would like to see more of, are read-alongs. I, I like those. I like the idea of them. And well, if you rejoin BookTube, you would see someone you know is doing a read-along of Pride and Prejudice. Okay, what? I don't know what the question is. That is a book I am embarrassed that I've never read. I've never read Pride and Prejudice. I've read, I've read other Jane Austens. And I've tried to read Pride and Prejudice probably three times in my life, and I've and I've never. The first two times I didn't like it, and the third time I was enjoying it, but I got distracted and never finished. So yeah. Directly behind her head, on the couch, Frida just pooped. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I've never read War and Peace. Um, never. Read Pride and Prejudice. After all this time, I know. 
I know, right? And I like Jane Austen. I, I've loved Jane Austen's other books that I've read. But for some reason, the first two times I tried Pride and Prejudice, I, 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 I was maybe too young or I didn't like it for some reason. And then the last time was a couple years ago, and I got just distracted by another book, and I never finished it. Well, isn't that a note to end on, book two? So that answers the previous question of a book that... Yeah, Pride and Prejudice. That's a pretty good one. That I'm ashamed I've never read. You should be. That I should be. You should be. You should I'm be. ashamed to know you. <laughs> well, that... More that, ashamed. <laughs> more ashamed to know you. <laughs> that wasn't the thing that tipped the... Canoe. All right. Well, there you go, book two. I don't want this video to be an hour long. We could easily right. do that. We walk along like nobody's business when we talk about anything. Uh, but then we'll be back next week. Oh. Bend your head down a bit so they can see the baby me in there. Oh. <laughs> now, see, if I had technical ability, that would be the thumbnail, but I don't. The three of us would be the thumbnail because there she is. There's the baby bean up on her perch. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now. Deb will be back next week. We'll do another video. <laughs> we'll do another video. Uh, but in the meantime, All right. I will be back. Goodbye, book two. Thank you, book two.